today with Tony Gomez from Global Trust. Um, and we're going to talk about some new things from Global Trust. And then more importantly, we're going to talk about what Global Trust is doing during these times to help the community and also help the people we serve, the production companies and all that. Um, so without further ado, Tony, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been with Global Trust um, and what your position is? Sure. Okay, well, first of all, thank you, Tom, for setting this up. So as most of you already heard, my name is Tony Gomez. I've been with Global Trust approximately 15 years. Um, I have a background in production. Uh, originally, I was going to school to be a music major, and I find myself many, many years later selling uh, aluminum trusses and talking to Tom about, you know, <laughs> welded uh, metal and stuff. <laughs> um, but Global Trust has been around for 15 years. I've had the pleasure to be with the company uh, from its infant stages, and now we've seen it grow, grow up to be, uh, you know, um, one of the name brands in the trusting industry. So, um, yeah. So, thank you, Tom, for setting this up, and let's sure. start talking about some products. Sure. And what's the difference? Um, and and I'm the ADJ regional sales manager. I handle a few states, and then I also handle Global Trust in some of those states as well. Um, I get asked all the time, and we just see it on the screen. What's the difference between Dura Trust and Global Trust? Sure. So a few years back, we, we, we made a decision to separate some of our products. Um, a lot of our legacy products that uh, have been around for, again, 15 plus years, such as the F-34, such as the uh, some of the F-33, 32, 31, we decided that it was probably best to keep those under the Global Trust name. And we just, as we started to introduce uh, new products, especially products that, that appeal to the uh, medium and pro-level uh, production industry, uh, we decided that we wanted to brand those under the Dura Trust name. Also, the Dura Trust name is a name that our uh, sister company in Europe uses to sell their trusted products. So it just kind of helps kind of bind the two companies together and helps strengthen the brand. Right. And I got a, this is kind of a serious question. I don't know if you know the answer, but how many times do you think our computers will do a reminder noise or our phone will beep or something like that will happen <laughs> during this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this one was my fault. I, I, I muted everything except my cell phone. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm. Uh, something will happen. I think I've done everything I can do. Now, since we're talking about trust and bent metal and welding and all that, I purposely kind of grew the beard for this because this is rugged stuff. This is stuff that people use to build stuff, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today. But before we get into what Global's doing to try to help communities and help the people we serve, the event production companies, do you mind if we talk about a couple new products? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about them. Yeah, this is something that I, on the ADJ side, we have a lot of video walls and we do real well with them. And during these times, you hear a lot about um, drive-in movies. You hear a lot about the outdoor church services, a, a lot of things like that. Um, and this is a brand new product, Tony. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So the DT36 uh, came into existence uh, about a, I think six months ago. And uh, so as of late, most of you already know, video walls have become a lot more cost efficient. They're a lot more accessible. Uh, they're being used in all sorts of different applications, not only entertainment, but you also see them in retail environments. You see um, on billboards now, I see billboards, the old school billboards coming down and being replaced by video wall displays. But to kind of go back into the entertainment side of, of the business, uh, one of the one of the challenges with hanging a video wall is centering the wall on a truss system. And typically what happens is the, your options are to hang it from the front cord, the rear cord, or you try to center it using a span set or some sort of a sling, which kind of takes away a little bit of the aesthetics. The cool thing about this type of trussing is that we added a, a center cord or a center tube right in the middle between the two bottom tubes as well as the top tubes that will allow you to center a video wall as well as any other lighting equipment or even audio equipment that that requires to be centered in order to in order to even distribute the load on a truss system. That's awesome. Yeah. So people using crank up stands or just about any application, um, centering the weight's really important. I know with moving heads, if you have heavy moving heads like our ADJ CMY three hundreds, um, you could put some on the front, some on the back, and even the weight out that way. But with the video wall, it's one uh, continuous uh, stress on the truss. Now I noticed something too. What's the what's the <laughs> what's the TUV stand for? 
TUV is a certification. It's a mark that certifies the load capacity of the trussing, um, as well as it all, they also provide um, welder certification services. So it's, it's, it serves two purposes. It, it confirms quality, and it also confirms the load capacity. So when you're buying trussing, um, while it all may look the same, but if it doesn't bear the TUV mark, then you, you might want to maybe ask a few more questions. Who's building the trussing? Are the welders certified? Um, who's doing quality control on the product? And if the company that is selling the trussing uh, has published load charts, you want to make sure that those numbers have been confirmed by an outside certification body. Right. This is pretty cool, and a lot of companies don't offer this. We have load and deflection charts. We get calls all the time where someone says, hey, I want to do 40 feet. I want What's the deflection going to be? Is it safe? Um, here they can look right on here as far as the bow and any deflection or load issues and, and actually make sure they're doing it safe. Uh, you know, it, from time to time, people hang trusts over other people's heads. So <laughs> it's probably not a not an area people want to cut corners or mess around with. Um, one thing, too, and I that I was thinking about as you were talking is when you're looking at trusts, and there's a lot of different trusts out there. There's a lot of copycat trusts. There's no name trusts. There's trusts that's not certified. And when I'm out on the road, one thing I'll notice is if I see um, other people's trust, I'll point out after a year or two, it's a really dark gray and has that greasiness to it. Um, whereas our trust is still bright and shiny and has the same color as when you bought it, the same silver uh, brightness that it had when you bought it. And what I point out on that is that even though they both might be aluminum, the grade of aluminum that the competitor or the knockoff or the direct import truss or whatever might be a really low grade. And you can tell over time as it's getting darker and darker, whereas ours looks the same as when you bought it, whether it's two, three, four years down the road because of the quality of the materials that we're using. Is, is that, do you find that as well, Tony? Yeah, uh, so you, you could probably take two different pieces of trusses from two different manufacturers, uh, different price points, right? And you, if you look at them, they might look the same. But you're right, Tom. Once you, if you if you took that piece of truss and cut it right down the middle, and you start and you took a caliber and you, and you measured the thickness of the actual aluminum, you might see that there is a significant difference in the thickness of the aluminum, and there might be a, a significant difference in the grade of the aluminum as you as you drop as, as you degrade the grade of the aluminum, right? And use different grades or lower quality aluminum. Yeah, you, you can lower the stuff. price point also of, of the trussing. So. It might look the same, but ultimately, you know, once you put it up in the air, once you start hanging the load on it, you might see a little bit of bowing, a little bit of sagging, especially if uh, if you're underloading the truss, you know, if you're not overloading the truss and you're well within the load capacity and so you still see bowing, that there's probably something going on with the grade of the aluminum and the thickness. Right. Okay, here's another new product, and this is more global uh, dirt truss stepping up into the, the more pro market. Can you tell us a little bit about the DTGP series? Sure. So this one has been in the works for uh, for a few years. Uh, we released it at LDI last year. It's currently in stock. And what we, what we started noticing was that we started working on projects that are a lot more demanding, that require higher load capacities. They also require uh, longer spans. And uh, not to take away from our legacy products like the F34, but there's different types of trusses for different applications. And so we decided to, uh, to release our own line of what we call American style bolt together trussing for those applications that require higher load capacities, longer spans, and more demanding use. Oh, awesome. So kind of something for everybody. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to bring up another product. And, and this is kind of a more mature product, but it still does really well. And I just want to especially with more, you know, our theme kind of more portable outdoor stuff going on. Uh, this is something that does really well. It's the ST180. It's been around a while and, and it's still very popular. And I think that's a testament right there uh, to it. So it is, what can you tell us about the ST180, Tony? Sure. The ST180 is one of our legacy products. It's been in the market for a few years. At least it's been around since I've been here. Uh, one of the things that I like about it is that it's very service friendly. Um, challenge when you're buying big heavy equipment is if it needs to be serviced do you really want to send it back to the manufacturer and one of the things that we need to be honest about is that 
the manufacturers don't have service centers in every city, every town, and every state. It's impossible, right? We do our best to try to find uh, partners that can service our equipment, but there's just times when uh, we have clients that are in small towns uh, far away from the city, and they don't have the luxury of being able to drive the equipment to a local service center. So that's one of the advantages about the uh, about the ST180. Another advantage about the ST180 also um, is that it's, it provides uh, plenty of stability if you look at the design. It's got an outrigger style base. It, it has a maximum height, working height of 18 feet, and it's got a low wow. capacity of 440 pounds. Between two stands, you can do 880 pounds, which is perfect for a lot of small, medium-sized production. Uh, if you need to hang a few lights across the front of the stage, if you need to hang some speakers off of it uh, between two uh, two stands and a piece of truss, or if you need to hang a video wall. Uh, pair this up with a DT36, and you have a pretty cool a heavy duty system to hang a video wall off of. Awesome. So um, that's a few of the product stuff that's going on with Global. I'm going to, hopefully this will work uh, smoothly and I'm going to slide a picture over here. There we go. So when we started this, we talked about helping the community. And so this is something that's kind of come up um, and we're going to show a, a few of them. So one of the things, the challenges, and I recognize every city, every county, every state has different regulations, but restaurants have started to open up restaurants that have had their dining rooms closed down are starting to open up and there is um, and they're doing the outdoor patios and maybe they had a small patio and I know in my neck of the woods there was some that didn't open um, the first time around uh, first set of regulations because their patios weren't big enough and it, it didn't make sense for them to be open they couldn't generate enough revenue to to justify being open with the staff and the cooks and everything else that goes on and so we had some local dealers in the LA area, and I know around the country we have dealers doing this, but they're stepping up and expanding patios uh, for the restaurants. And this one's actually kind of cool. I'm gonna show a few. This one's using our I-Beam truss, uh, which is a very light duty solution, but they are taking kind of like a Night at the Roxbury, they're taking the inside <laughs> of their restaurant, <laughs> making it the outside. And this is during the setup uh, right. stages of that, but they are, um, allowing the restaurants to be able to open and serve the community. And then also uh, they're allowing event production companies probably were involved in the sale and setup of this. So uh, this is kind of cool. I'm gonna bring another one over as well. Uh, let's see, this is kind of cool too. Here's a beer garden that was done uh, as well and it's using the I-Beam Trust um, as well. This was actually uh, done before uh, COVID, but you can get an idea of uh, setting it up to create a designated enclosed space. And then let's see here. Here is actually a video wall done. Um, let's see here. There we go. Here's the inside of a space, a restaurant that was done. And this is using the F34 truss. You can see it's square. And this has the video wall up again. This is actually a local sports bar. Um, and I believe Alfred and Edgar at ADJ helped uh, put this together with the local dealer. But you can see how many, how much capacity they have for people. Um, Tony, do you want to talk about maybe some of the projects you've been involved with helping local businesses expand? Yeah, as of late, uh, we've, uh, we've been uh, servicing our community, some of our dealers as well, and some of the local restaurants by providing, as Tom, as you mentioned, some of these uh, outdoor dining solutions. Uh, I think one of the things that makes trusting uh, an attractive solution versus some of the other options that are out there, uh, not taken away from them, but I think one of the things that people really like about it is the lifespan. Um, if you take an easy up and you put it out in the sun, especially in this nice, warm California weather, um, the sun will eat right through that real flimsy thin tarp. So uh, canopies, easy ups are fairly inexpensive. Um, you, know, you, can get, you can get one for a hundred bucks, but it, it might it might have a lifespan of maybe, you know, three to four weeks by the time that the, you know, the sun gets his hands on it. So one of the nice things about the trussing is uh, you're dealing with a material that uh, is not going to deteriorate over time with the sun. And uh, there's a lot of providers out there, a lot of companies that offer uh, shade solutions that are that are resistant against the, uh, the elements, especially the hot sun here in California and, and other parts of the country. Um, one of the other things too, as you mentioned, Tom, is that it's allowing clients to provide a comfortable, I won't even say elegant dining solution. I've driven by a few restaurants that have a bunch of easy ups 
it just it looks weird <laughs> right or the rental you know, tents it, i think it just doesn't look right yeah there's some by us and they I'm have sorry. the rental yeah. tents and it looks like a wedding's going to happen like a wedding reception which exactly. is and the, exactly. the thing with that is they're probably renting that and like you said when seasons change or uh just the wear factor those are going to wear out one of the neat things about this and right. um is that there's a couple things one is when they are able to open their dining room there's certain people who aren't going to want to go in there's still there's going to be a a lag once this is all over between when people are comfortable whether it's going to the movies or whether it's going in a dining room so it's going to allow them to expand their overall occupancy and if they were to call a builder and add on this much square footage i can guarantee it's going to be a lot more than purchasing a few sticks of truss and from the local production or event company and having them come set it up the other thing too is that trust doesn't really wear out um, in this type of application and, the, and global trust holds its value really well. So if they decide to modify this or at some point uh, not use it anymore and maybe ex have a builder come in and do something or for whatever reason they don't need it anymore, to, to put it on the, the secondary market, it's gonna hold its value reasonably well compared to, like you said, an easy up or a rental tent or whatever where there's no value in it. Um, so this is actually something that's gonna hold its value. And also, you know, we've said it before, it's like Lincoln Logs, you know, you can change the shape of it. Um, in this particular one, and I'm going to close this picture, and I'll, I can bring it back. Uh, actually, let's move it over here. At the end of there, you can see the video screen, and here is the the uh, the uh, stand for the video wall. And this was custom made. This is the coolest thing ever, I think. It has the wheels on it. it has some Avante speakers. And when there's a sporting event, um, <laughs> and it has the... The distance right here so you see so these guys so you're not exchanging terms with this guy <laughs> as a, a safe distance but this is something they can roll all over so in that other shot i see it at the end where i think it is right here but if they had a big event in the parking lot they could roll it in the parking lot or say they have a live band in the parking lot or say when the dining room opens or the club opens they can roll it in there and put it behind the dj or on the side or whatever um We've done enough trade shows and seen enough structures like this without wheels. And someone goes, it needs to be two feet over there. And, and moving it is not, it's usually like six people trying to move things around. So this is pretty cool. And I know Global doesn't sell these wheels, but again, we're just trying to give people ideas. And this is what somebody did where they can roll this ADJ video wall over with the Avante speakers on it and have a video, uh, awesome video set up. So, um, yeah, and along the lines of the builder, like you mentioned, Tom, about bringing in a builder, uh, the, the investment that would be involved in that. There, also, when you bring in a builder, there's a lot of red tape. you got to get construction permits. you got to get the okay from the city. Uh, I think a lot of restaurants and a lot of, uh, out, uh, a lot of venues are taking advantage of the fact that a lot of cities and counties are being very flexible when it comes to setting up an outdoor dining oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. area or an outdoor which is an outdoor patio. And so if you brought in a builder and you want to do something out of wood and you want to put a roof on it, uh, you know, add an ex or extend your building outward, it, 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 aside from the cost of building it, then you're, then you're looking at a lot of red tape trying to get approved from the city. Oh, this yeah. way, you're, you're kind of able to skip a few steps. Now, I, I would still recommend that if you're in an area where you, the structure may be exposed to high winds, uh, unless, you know, if you didn't hire a company to, to set it up properly, you should definitely consult with an engineer to make sure that this structure will perform as intended and that you are weighted down accordingly and is being guy wired down properly so that if, again, we're dealing with some high winds, uh, which in the LA area, we really don't. If you get closer to Orange County or Santa Ana San or Albuquerque or Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> and that's part of <laughs> right exactly right and that's part of why you want to get like a production company or an event company to help set it up especially because they're going to know how to deal with things in high wind areas and like you said whether it's guide wires right. whether it's cement blocks you know whatever it's going to take mm -hmm. they're familiar with the changing of the weather conditions the other thing too is um so this is restaurants uh and we we showed beer gardens we showed restaurants um we have video walls uh whether it's the sunday church service whether it's drive-in movies we also, and I think you were involved in this, up in uh, Washington State, we have a Indian casino that is open and they moved all their uh, gaming tables outdoors and they used our I-beam truss and actually made tent, specialty tents um, to 
uh, now be able to offer gaming outdoors. So they moved it in the parking lot and built some built a big tent structure. Unfortunately, I don't have a photo of that, but they built a big tent structure using our I-Beam Trust. So that's just another way um, that you can use uh, Global Trust. And again, Global Trust is allowing a business to open, you know, helping a business to reopen and bring profits in and employ people and pay taxes and do all this stuff uh, that businesses do, which is help keep the community going. So um, is there anything else you can think of Tony, that you guys are doing that's awesome for the community and for our customers? Oh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, the outdoor uh, worship services. Yeah, I muted myself. Uh, you, you mentioned the outdoor uh, worship services. Um, that's become, you know, it's, be, it's becoming way a lot more common now. I know I drive by, you know, uh, you know, a few churches on, on the way home or sometimes when I'm running errands especially Sunday mornings when you see a lot of them going outdoors. So again, another perfect solution for churches that are looking at going outdoors. If you if, if there's a church out there that's thought about maybe revamping their stage at some point with a more modern look, this could be a perfect time. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. You're, you're, you're providing a solution for the outdoor worship experience. And then once this is all said and done, it's all over with, you can take that structure, put it inside and configure it to adapt itself to the stage. Uh, but, but you're right, Tom, we're, we're trying to do what we can. Um, as a community, I think we all have to put in our part. You know, we talk about wearing masks and everybody, whether you believe in it or not. Um, you know, we're not going to debate that here on <laughs> on this on this video. But you know, there's an opportunity for everybody to do their part, whether it's wearing a mask or just providing services to help others um, get back to doing trying to do business as usual, or the churches that want to get back to doing worship sort of normally they would indoor, but now in an outdoor environment. Right, and Global Trust is here to help, and and I'm on the ADJ side as well, and we're here to help too. If you need help with design, you need um, we have basic inside design. Um, the guys at Global who are awesome can knock out, or if you need a structural engineering, there's outside people that Tony can refer you to um, to help if there's structural issues you're concerned about that can actually certify designs and do some really cool stuff uh, that way. Um, Tony, if someone wanted to get a hold of you, uh, what's the easiest way? Or if they wanted to email Global Trust yeah, and get a quote or, or get directed right. to a local event or production company. Yeah, give us a call. Uh, the number here is 323-415-6225. That is the office line. You can ask for me or you, or you can ask for anybody in our sales team. We're a small office. Uh, and just, you know, I just want to let everybody know that all we do is trusting. You're not calling a case company that sells trusting or... Uh, you're not calling a lighting company that sells trusting. If you need lighting, call Tom. If you need trusting, call Tony. Right? We're we're dead. We're we're dedicated. Uh, you know, trust people. And Tom's a dedicated lighting guy. He also kind of seconds as a trust sales guy, and he's good at what he does. But oh, if you. you need help, just give us a call at number three two three four one five six two two five. And you can also email us at support at globaltrust.com. That email address comes directly to me. So if you want to get a hold of me, just send an email to support. Uh, send it over if you have any questions as far as the design. Like Tom said, if you need help uh, with engineering, we work with a, an engi a, a local engineering firm that provides those type of services. Um, if you need us to refer you to a dealer or a production company to help with a quote or with a, uh, with a setup, please just give us a call. We're here to help as much as we possibly can. You know, one thing I always like to point out that I'm proud of working for the ADJ group is um, we're family owned. There's no board of directors. There's not... Uh, a bunch of venture cap. There's not all this stuff that some of the, our competitors have to deal with. We're family owned. The owner of the company before all this would cruise through on a regular basis. Chuck Davies, amazing guy. And, you know, everybody's accessible. And when you're dealing with Global Trust or ADJ or Avante or Eliminator or Alation or any of the brands under the ADJ group umbrella, um, you're dealing with a family owned business. You're dealing with families. You're dealing a lot of people within our companies. It's cousins. It's, it's, it's that, you know, everybody knows each other. And you mentioned you've worked here there 15 years. I think it's probably been close to that for me. A lot of people have worked at our companies. Um, we don't have much turnover. You're not going to talk to someone this week and then two weeks from now when you're ready to move forward, um, talk to somebody else and have to start over. We're a family-owned company, family-owned business based in Los Angeles, California. We're worldwide. Um, but you're dealing with uh, you're dealing with families. You're dealing with family-owned company. We don't answer to board of directors um, or anybody else, which has allowed us to, I think, give uh, do a, a great job at providing service and 
than a lot of other companies. Right. So I. Yeah. No, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up, Tom. I mean, uh, you know, I want again, you already did it, but I want to give a shout out to our founder, Chuck Davies. I also want to give a shout out to uh, Ken. Uh, most of you, most, of, most people know him as Kenny. 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 President, yeah, president of our company. Yeah. Does Kenny uh, know you're doing this? He's a great this? guy. He's our fearless leader. Does Kenny know you're doing yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, I totally had a. Yeah, I post my dad, well, don't bother me. Uh, I'm going to jump on a call with Tom, right? <laughs> but no, Kenny's a great guy, and he's, he's at the forefront of his company. And, and everybody here at Global, uh, Robert, Danny, uh, Pedro, everybody that's, 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 that works for Global, we're here to work for you and to service our clients. And um, and I want I also want to say thank you to all of our dealers that have been supporting us through this time. We're here to support you as well, but we appreciate everything that you guys are doing. And uh, we, you know, if there's anything we can do, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for the time. Uh, if you have any questions for Tony, you can always reach out to him. If you have any uh, questions for me, you can email me at tom.ferret, F-R-E-R-E-T, at adj.com. Um, and I think we'll wrap it up. Thanks so much for the time. Stay safe, everybody. We really appreciate you watching this. And I think that'll do it. Thank you very much.